why don't we get started then? Everyone, uh, oh, so sorry. Um, let me get my announcement out of the way first. Announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10-4-6 at SEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. Haley, would you please call the roll? Yes. Uh, Mr. Dedich? Here. Mr. Mealy? Here. Chairman Von Aiken? Here. Also present, we have our board planner, Mr. Weiser. Hello. Our board engineer, Mr. Ken Giano. Yep. And our board attorney, Mr. Lagana. Here. All right, very good. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this meeting is open to the general public. Seeing no one else present, um, I will move on to the agenda. Application number 22.528. Um, is the applicant present? No. All right, please come forward. Chairman, members, for the record, Larry Cowley, we have the applicant. Relatively simple application, a little bit of an odd one, Mr. Chairman, because the net change here is effectively zero. What I'd like to do is describe what brings us here this evening, what we hope to do, and then introduce you to our one and only professional, should you have any questions, Mr. John Rick, who's our surveyor of record. So this application before the board is technically, under the eyes of Title 40, can't come out to a minor subdivision because it is a lot line adjustment. Mm -hmm. The impetus and genesis of this is when the applicant um, sold one of the abutting properties, one of the properties which is subject to this application a lot there before, um, it was, a scrivener's error was identified in the survey. Their survey, the buyer, did not match the survey of the seller. And we endeavored and agreed as part of that sale to correct this in the township records. On paper it exists, in title work it exists. We know where the lot line is, but in the township records, it's off by a few feet. I think it's about an eight foot strip, it's off in the back. So we undertook to have corrective surveying done. Mr. Rick prepared the survey, he's here this evening. When he prepared it, the entire back of the property, because our client owns a lot of property, he used to own a pretty decent assemblage of land mm -hmm. with a more ambitious development in mind that never came to fruition. Now he's slowly selling them off to homeowners. We realized that the scrivener's error goes across the entirety of the back of our property, cutting across two other properties behind us, lots 54 and 76. It's their land effectively today from the township records. It still shows as our land. This is a correction just so the world, the township, can recognize that it is their land. It's an eight foot strip. We are not giving away it's theirs effectively, but the township is not going to recognize that we're giving them, the abutting property owners, that eight foot strip throughout the back of the property. There's no development proposed. There's no new lots proposed. There's no new setback deficiencies proposed. There's no non-conforming coverage proposed, nothing like that. It's just an even swath of land that was ours on paper, on some paper. The reality is theirs, we're giving it to them. And this is the corrective effort that is required precedent to us actually creating a new deed with a new meets and bounds description to file with county clerk's office. That is the entirety of what we're here for this evening, Mr. Chair and members. Okay, and based on what you've just addressed, it sounds like all of the owners are, are are okay with this they are in fact forward. one requested it and the other i spoke to on saturday and at first i think he thought he was getting land he thought he was getting a notice from the township with land being taken from him <laughs> notice is actually gratuitous notice is not required for a conforming minor site plan mm -hmm. i did it just out of habit and said why not the yeah. suspenders once i explained to mr johansson i said you're actually getting land i said i'm happy to put it off if you want to have your attorney call me or anything no no please proceed an email I forwarded to Nora, and again, you know, it's a notice-free application. He would have known about it. Okay. To correct the error, but once he realized he was getting 1,800 square feet of land, it was all it was all okay pretty quickly. Within the hour on Saturday afternoon. So. Okay, very good. Uh, let me turn to our planner in case there are any issues of completeness. Yeah, um, I've got a couple of issues here based on applicant submission that I'm I'm just going to run through the board. Um, we made some recommendations. I, don't think the applicant at least I don't it, if the applicant um, has uh, addressed those requests we never got them so I'm going to just go through them um, they're all very minor if the board wishes to uh, do what they want to do with it you know it's it's, it's uh, certainly up to you okay. so we have a report <coughs> pardon me dated July 5th 
2022. And on page two, um, Appendix A requires item number seven, a statement from the property owners granting permission for the board um, and its experts to enter the property. Uh, the applicant had this NA. Um, we requested that it be submitted. Um, I don't know how important that is given this particular uh, point in time. There are requirements uh, regarding DEP documentation that were not submitted. The applicant indicated that they were not applicable. We do not disagree. Um, similarly, uh, no wetlands for minor subdivisions, a copy of protective covenants. Those were both listed as not applicable as were a Highlands uh, exemption. We do not disagree with any of that. Um, on page three of our report, we did ask the applicant to mis submit site photographs. They have not been submitted. Um, Which I have, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm not sure what they're really going to show. I do have some I can submit for the record, but again, I'm not really sure what it's depicting. I have pictures of each of the three houses on the three lots and the contiguous lot line in the rear, which is like trees and fence. So okay. have them, it's a them. submission requirement on our checklist. So, so you'll have them for testimony then? Uh, we could this evening, okay. sure. All right. Okay. Um, moving along now um, for Form 4 or Checklist Form 4, Minor Subdivision. Um, we have similarly uh, the name of the proposed subdivision. Uh, applicant has indicated not applicable. Uh, the name of adjacent owners and adjacent subdivisions, locations and dimensions of profiles of proposed streets they're indicated as not applicable we do not disagree um there is a requirement uh where a waiver is requested for the following uh item five on form four space for signatures for the chairman and the secretary of the board Location of natural features, woodland, streams, etc. Existing and, top, uh, and proposed topo, topographic contours, location and with them any embutting streets, uh, existing and proposed storm drainage. Uh, the applicant requests a waiver. We do not object. Um, moving on now to page four, uh, there were a number of items: soil erosion and sediment, erosion and sediment control plan location of any required uh, dedication, location, design of fences, walls, sidewalks, etc. Uh, location and description of trees, reforestation, landscaping, construction details, traffic study, and environmental impact study. Uh, applicant has indicated that those are all non-applicable and we do not disagree. Okay. So that is um, where we have it so far. All right, there are a number of waivers identified here. So um, uh, any uh, any motions from the board members to accept the waivers as presented? Mr. Chairman, a motion to accept the waivers as described here. Okay, and do we have a second? Second, I did. Okay, uh, I think with three of us, we'll just say all in favor? Yep. Aye. Uh, Aye, okay. The waivers are accepted. Thank you. Uh, and the application is complete. Please continue. Thank you. So all I can do very briefly, Mr. Chairman, is call our first and only witness, Mr. John Ritt. I've indicated he's a scrivener of record, and he can tell you more in surveying parlance exactly what that lot area line confusion was, mm -hmm. how it's being corrected, and the entirety of this application, which is development free. I don't feel like coming on up. But we can certainly circulate and mark these site photos during Mr. Ritt's testimony. Do right. you need him sworn in? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sir, please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got Yes, I do. Name and address for the record, please. please uh, John Ritt, 1109 is Road Drive, Storesville, New Jersey. Can you please, please, sorry, Larry, can oh, you sorry. please spell your last name? R-I-T-T. Thank you, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you the board, John. Your background in credentials and licensing? The field of um, I'm a licensed surveying? New Jersey surveyor. I've been surveying since 2004 is when I was licensed. Graduate of NJIT in West Virginia University of Civil Engineering and Civil Engineering and Technology. I've owned James P. Deedy Surveyors since uh, 2007. Okay. 
Any questions for the witness? All right. Witness is acceptable. Please continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, and I think, um, Council, he's only going to be showing you this evening uh, what's on file with the board. If anything looks different, okay. uh, if it's marked up, we'll mark it for the board and we'll leave it this evening. Okay. Okay. But if you could walk the board briefly through what I tried to explain in my progress to you, the lot line issue will be able to do here this evening. Okay, basically, what happened was in 1938, which the map eventually got filed in the early 1950s, filed map 1346. We were part of the mother track of this, and there just was an error. Um, there was an error in the map when they built, when they extracted the, the whole subdivision out of this piece, and when they wrote the deed for the remainder lot, which is lot uh, 53, there was an error, and it just overlapped. It. So what we did is when we surveyed out the additional lots, uh, you know, lot 54 and lot 76, we, um, on these two, I guess you have all these exhibits in one house, these, uh, we, we showed where the overlap was, the area of questionable title, and we decided where we would, you know, cut the lots and give each, you know, give away land to each lot. And as I brought it down, it's a narrow strip, I think it's about eight feet and change in width, running throughout the Yes, the, the, southerly, yeah. the, the southerly line of our lot, which is the main lot, which is lot 53, and then the northerly lot of uh, 54 and 76. No new development proposed? Not that I know of, no. no. No construction of any kind? No. No new setbacks or encroachments being created by way of this eight foot jog of the lot line? No. That's all we have. All right. Uh, and the existing chain link fence then is in the appropriate location. Is that my understanding? Is yes, it is. Okay. Uh, any it other? Seems like it's the line um, line of possession, what they believe to be the original intent of where they needed that line, mm -hmm. but they just made a mistake with the numbers and it brought the line over that about eight feet. Okay. So I'm just confused. You on your blow up there of the area of question on the top of each page, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in the one between 54 and 53. It says area to be acquired by lot 54, that eight foot strip from lot 53. So is lot 54 um, getting larger? Area to be acquired by 54. So, 54 will all be right. so what, what I'm confused on, you, you see the boundary between yeah. 76 and 54. Right. Um, it's 212 feet, point, 212.53 feet long. And just 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 a point of clarification, I'm just looking for on the tax map, which is cor correctly shown, or the tax map shows it's 212 feet as well. Yes. Why are the numbers the same? Shouldn't it be a shorter number on the tax map? Well, no, it's an overlap because this deed and the tax map believe that's 212.53. Okay, so 53. Uh, yes, deed. but when you come down, the lot above it, the larger lot, overlaps it. Okay. So that's what we're rectifying. Mm -hmm. is the okay. large lot. Okay. Going so in the and tax map followed. The yeah, the you know what it is? The tax map actually copies or follows when the file map was created, the whole bottom part. Okay. That's where they got their numbers when they created the tax map. <clears throat> okay. But if you survey the large lot above, <coughs> you survey the ones below, the lot lines from the one above is south into the... So I just want to follow up on that. So the meets and bounds shown on your maps that you have in front of you are the corrected meets and bounds, the correct meets and bounds. Yes, and they're also the meets and bounds by each one of these smaller lots, 54 and 76. We held those as true because of the file map and also the tax map. Okay. So 54 and 76, their boundaries do not change on their... Per deed, it does not. You're cor yeah, you're correct. We'll be, we'll be doing a new deed... For 70, 53. For the big one, yes, yeah. 53. And their boundaries are being adjusted accordingly. Yes. Um, are you intending to file the map as long, along with the deed, or are you just going to be doing it? It's not really a minor subdivision or a, or, or a major, so we'll be doing it by deed. deed was, okay, you can. Deed was the plan. Okay, okay. That, that's all I have. And the fence is in the right spot then. Yeah, it seems like that was the intent of the owner when he built this whole subdivision and cut all these lots out. Right. That's how he laid it out. <laughs> It was good right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's really just that both people have a claim to this part of yeah, the land. True. That, okay. It right. says this common owner. Mm -hmm. I mean, he owns all yeah. these lots. 
until he just sold. Uh, he's just sold 54 earlier. Mm -hmm. it, this is this is the best time to rectify yeah. an error. Yeah, sure. So it's when they sell off the time people, to do it. Yeah. 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 When they sell off the okay. people, you have a correct number and a correct deed, and all the deeds right. will match, and everyone will be right. lay off. Mr. Wessner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Back again to our report of July 5th. Um, we have a bulk chart uh, on page four that continues on to five and six. Um, before we get into the actual issues, um, it was brought to our attention just now that uh, we have uh, it listed as an R3 zone, where it's really an R4 zone. Is that correct? I believe so. Our four sounds right to me. I did no bulk calculations. The engineer did. Okay. Um, so there was some question whether our indication of R3 was correct, which would have meant the bulk chart was incorrect, or vice versa. Turns out it's an R4, not an R3. I just this moment checked uh, the bulk requirements, and the, the bulk requirements in the chart are R4 requirements. So um, you can. Uh, Disregard the tight or disregard the R3, but keep uh, in your mind the zoning chart. That's correct. So um, there are no variances required. There are a number of statistics uh, requirements under the uh, zoning for R4 that have not been uh, submitted. Um, we have them as undetermined in our chart. Um, and uh, we had hoped that the applicant would have given us that information so we could have completed our report and made it nice and clean. That didn't happen. So uh, I leave it to you. The applicant has said there's no variances required. Um, I leave it to uh, the, the committee here to, um, to rule as you see fit. Well, I, if I may have one thing, Mr. Chairman. Our engineer who was working in concert, Mr. Ritt, populated for me today your bulk table. Now, I want to say it's um, respectfully irrelevant in the sense that it's a variance-free application and the residue lot is about 15 times the size of the zone requirement, give or take. Mm -hmm. still at over 90,000 square feet. So it's completely relief-free. What I can certainly do, Mr. Chairman, is if the board would like to see it, I can have our engineer populate this chart on Mr. Weiser's report I can submit it to Mr. Lagana's office and the board engineer. You can confirm that, in mm -hmm. fact, this is more than variance free. It's a net change of zero. And in fact, conditions are improving because the smaller lots are increasing nominally in size. If the board feels like they would like that as a condition of the approval, we're more than glad to do that. Well, that, that would be acceptable. Um, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, these are variances. They, if they're not recorded, then they could come back to bite you. So if you don't think they're relevant, then well, there are no variances. Yeah, this is a fully and, and, lot left. Over. Yeah, and so a, as you said, there's no variances. Uh, if we find out later that there were variances needed, then that's where the problems come in. So right. Yeah. Well, you would have to come back before we the board. Back on notice on that application. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. So this would be a confirmatory submission administratively that the applicant would be glad to do after the fact. I have right. no problem with that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Again, understanding that. If it's conforming, then we can proceed as, as we are proceeding this evening. And if, okay. if there are variances that are ultimately called out, then Council and I will have a debate discussion. We'll go ahead with that. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, any members of the committee have any other questions to add? Okay. The only, the only comment I had was Council, the, the um, affidavit of service and publication, was that submitted to? It was. Okay. It was. Yeah, even with the conforming minor, we did submit that to the Understanding. Office. Just yeah. uh, Just so the board understands uh, for purposes of. You know, the public, I know that it doesn't have to be noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, the board feels yeah. more comfortable. Council will set the belt of suspenders on this one, and we do have the. I was doing like 10 notices that day. This one just made me <laughs> what happened to Damage the Truth. Understood. And then I regretted it on Saturday when I saw the neighbor. I said, I didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. Thank okay. you. That's all I had. All right. Thank great. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add to your that application? Okay. I want to thank you for your time again this evening. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, then, with that said, I'll accept a motion from members of the committee. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mealy. A motion to approve application number 22.528, Aaron's, Martin's, Johansson, 2 Thompson Road, 1 Thompson Road, 156 Red Gate Road, Block 435, Lots 53, 54, and 76, Minor site plan 
for a lot line adjustment and condition as enumerated with respect to? With respect to the uh, bulk variance. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I agree. Okay. Thank you for that, Mr. Millian. Do we have a second? Second, Dadich. Okay. Kelly, would you please call the roll? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Dadich? Yes. Mr. Millian? Yes. Chairman Bonnegan? Yes. Okay. Application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have Appreciate a great time. day. You have one of the best board attorneys around. I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Man. Now you got to keep taking about the line. You got to put it on the record. Well, Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she as soon as it goes off the record. <laughs> so moved. All right. Any uh, objections? Okay. Uh, we are adjourned then. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. I know we're up north, um, but would it be impermissible for me to say go Eagles? <laughs>